Ancient Egyptians were skilled architects, engineers, and artists, and they produced some of the most impressive monuments and works of art in the ancient world. They built massive pyramids, temples, and other public works that served as symbols of their power and civilization. Ancient Egyptians had developed a sophisticated culture and economy based largely on the fertile Nile River Valley that flowed through the heart of the country. The Egyptians were skilled at managing the river's annual floods and using irrigation systems to distribute water to their fields. This allowed them to produce surplus crops that could be traded for other goods and services. At the heart of this empire was a charismatic and intelligent queen called Cleopatra. She came to the throne at the age of 18 after the death of her father Ptolemy XII in 51 BC. She was known for her patronage of the arts, and her court was home to many of the most renowned artists, writers, and scholars of the time. Cleopatra herself was a scholar and poet, and she was fluent in multiple languages, including Greek, Egyptian, and Latin. She was to rule Egypt jointly as co-regent with her ten-year-old younger brother, Ptolemy XIII, who was also her husband, something very common in Egyptian culture. However, their relationship was fraught with tension and conflict from the very beginning. Her brother's advisors, who were mostly eunuchs, held a significant amount of power and often manipulated the boy emperor against his sister. They saw Cleopatra as a threat to their authority and began plotting against her almost immediately. However, Cleopatra was a dominant figure and desired to rule with an iron fist. Perhaps it was her own ambitions, or just the fact that her brother was too young to rule. She tried to play a major role in ruling the country. This made her clash with the nobles who constantly nagged the boy Pharaoh against Cleopatra. She realized the tense situation and understood that the joint rule could not last long. It was either going to be her or her brother. In an attempt to consolidate her power, Cleopatra began to take steps to sideline her brother. She had the support of the Egyptian people, who saw her as a capable leader and were growing increasingly disenchanted with Ptolemy's advisors. However, the support of common folk meant nothing because ultimately the influential nobles and politicians had more power. They made the pharaoh dismiss Cleopatra, forcing her into exile in Alexandria, as Ptolemy declared himself the sole ruler of Egypt. There are different theories as to why Ptolemy did not kill Cleopatra, but instead only exiled her from Egypt. One possibility is that he may have been hesitant to take such an extreme action against his own sister, especially since it could have been viewed as a violation of traditional Egyptian values. Nevertheless, it was probably not his decision anyways, but the decision of the boy Pharaoh's chief advisor, Pothinus, an influential eunuch who had also served his father as an advisor. However, what he did not expect was that Cleopatra would go on to challenge the authority of the Pharaoh. In the year 48 BC, Cleopatra returned to Egypt with an army, seeking to regain her rightful place on the throne. She landed with her forces at the port city of Pelusium, which was under the control of Ptolemy's forces. In a series of battles, Cleopatra's forces were able to capture the city and defeat Ptolemy's army. Ptolemy's forces, on the other hand, regrouped and were able to retake the city of Alexandria. The conflict was far from over, however, and both sides hustled to gain power. Meanwhile, in the Roman Empire, the great Julius Caesar defeated Pompey, the famous statesman of Rome in the Battle of Pharsalus, who was then forced to flee to Egypt in an attempt to save his life. A long time ago, Pompey had lent the Egyptian kingdom large sums of money, and he felt that the pharaoh was in his debt. He appealed to the pharaoh to help him in his struggle against Julius Caesar. However, Ptolemy knew that Pompey was a defeated man, and with his own battle to fight against Cleopatra, he was not in a position to help others fight their wars. If at all, he was the one who needed help against Cleopatra. Ptolemy, now a boy of 14, had matured, and he played his political move. He knew Julius Caesar was headed to Egypt in pursuit of Pompey, and he thought if he could win the favor of Julius Caesar, Caesar could help him crush Cleopatra's rebellion. Therefore, he slayed the Roman statesman Pompey, and when Julius Caesar arrived in his court, he presented Pompey's head as a gift to Caesar. To the surprise of the pharaoh, Caesar was furious when he saw Pompey's head. Even though Pompey was his opponent, he was Roman nonetheless. 
Egypt and Rome were at peace with each other, and he did not appreciate the behavior of the pharaoh who killed a respected Roman general in such an undignified manner. He refused to help Ptolemy against his sister and sought an audience with Cleopatra before deciding to go to war against her. The pharaoh house arrested Caesar and told him he would not release him until he agreed to fight alongside him against Cleopatra. As soon as Cleopatra found out that Julius Caesar, the great Roman military general, was here in Egypt, she reportedly disguised herself as a servant and smuggled herself into Caesar's quarters to free him. She used her charisma and political savvy to win the support of Caesar. She was exactly the kind of woman who would appeal to a man like Julius Caesar. Caesar knew that peace was important in Egypt as grain and other foods were imported to Rome from this very place. Due to the recent wars in Egypt, there was disrupt in supply which had caused food riots in Rome, and Caesar wanted to solve this issue for his republic. He sided with Cleopatra as she struck him not only as more politically mature and capable than her brother, but also because of her charm and beauty. The two grew romantically close to each other and fell in love. The relationship between Cleopatra and Caesar was therefore both political and personal. Caesar was a military genius, and his forces helped Cleopatra's army to lay siege to Alexandria, and they were able to capture the city after several months of fighting. During the siege of Alexandria, Ptolemy was killed in battle, possibly drowned in the Nile River as per many reports. Cleopatra assumed full control of Egypt, and Caesar went back to Rome to address the food riots that had caused massive uprising in the city. His trusted general Mark Antony had failed to solve the problem. Caesar asserted full control announcing himself as a dictator until there was stability in Rome. He was able to solve the issue of food shortage swiftly since there was peace in Egypt now, and grain could be imported easily without any hindrance. Although Caesar had solved the issue, but his temporary position as dictator approved by the Senate was becoming increasingly permanent, and he continued to hold the office even after the crisis had passed. This and his relationship with the foreign Egyptian queen Cleopatra did not sit well with powerful senators in the Roman Republic. Many senators were worried that Caesar was becoming too powerful and would eventually turn Rome into a monarchy or dictatorship. They were also concerned about the way Caesar was using his power to undermine the traditional authority and privileges of the Senate and other political institutions. Therefore, Julius Caesar was assassinated by a group of senators on March 15, 44 BC. News reached Cleopatra, and she was devastated both for her personal and political loss. Cleopatra was determined to ally herself with Rome again because she understood that Rome was a dominant power in the Mediterranean world at that time, and that an alliance with Rome would be crucial for the security and prosperity of Egypt. She feared Roman invasion in her own country, and her relationship with Caesar had guaranteed that would not happen. With Caesar now gone, she turned to other means. She aligned herself with Mark Antony, one of Caesar's closest allies and general, to secure her own throne and protect Egypt from Roman interference. In 41 BC, Mark traveled to Egypt to meet with her and negotiate an alliance. Cleopatra famously arrived in a stunning display, sailing down the Nile on a barge decorated with gold and purple sails, with servants dressed as cupids fanning her. Antony was smitten, and the two began a passionate love affair that would last for the rest of their lives. Cleopatra used her influence over Antony to further her political goals. Together, they formed an alliance against Octavian, who was none other than Caesar's own adopted son. However, Antony's reputation was damaged when he divorced his Roman wife to marry Cleopatra and fathered several children with her, which made him appear to be a puppet of the foreign queen. In 31 BC, Octavian declared war on Antony and Cleopatra, and their armies met in the Battle of Actium in Greece. Cleopatra was a skilled politician and strategist, but she had little military experience. Antony led the army, but his judgment was clouded by his love for Cleopatra and his excessive drinking habit. Octavian's navy was far superior, and he outmaneuvered Antony's forces, who were weakened by sickness and desertion. In the decisive battle, Cleopatra and her fleet watched from a safe distance, while Antony's forces were decimated by Octavian's superior tactics. Seeing that all was lost, Cleopatra ordered her ships to flee, and Antony followed her lead. 
The battle was a crushing defeat for their alliance, and they were forced to retreat to Alexandria, Egypt. Octavian pursued them, and after a siege of several months, Antony's army began to desert him, while Cleopatra's people began to turn against her. In August of 30th BC, Antony received false reports that Cleopatra had committed suicide, and out of despair, he took his own life. When Cleopatra learned of his death, she resolved to join him in the afterlife. According to legend, Cleopatra arranged for an asp, a venomous snake, to be brought to her in a basket of figs. She then allowed the snake to bite her, and she died from the poison. Her death not only marked the end of Roman Republic and the beginning of the Roman Empire, but also the end of the Ptolemaic dynasty, which had ruled Egypt since the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC. After her death, Cleopatra became a legend and a symbol of female power and independence. She has been depicted in countless